Welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about the tsunami disaster management. As the word tsunami basically is uh, derived from a Japanese word, tsunami is comprised of two words. Basically, uh, su means harbor and nami means waves. Basically, it is a Japanese term that in Japan means harbor waves. And the tsunami are also called seismic sea waves. Basically, the waves which are created uh, as a result of earthquakes because of most of the tsunamis are generated by unnecessary seismic events. These uh, tsunami waves are also called as high energy tidal waves. So tsunami basically is happens because of various reasons one of the prime reason of the tsunami is the earthquakes another reason is volcanic eruptions uh, and many other reasons could be there like the landslides the marine landslides can happen or the glacier carving metroid impacts uh, or any other potential event like the missile testing in the oceans that can generate the tsunami. Unlike normal ocean waves which are generated by winds or tides which are generated by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun, tsunami is basically the displacement of the water by a large event as we have discussed because of the earthquakes. And normally tsunami are not generated by a normal shaking of the earth uh, like the low intense or low magnitude earthquakes. Basically, these are generated by the high magnitude earthquakes that mark more than 7.5 on the Richter scale. That is, the magnitude should be more than 7.5 and after then only the tsunami can be generated. So here is a, a three-dimensional video in which you can see how the earthquakes or the tectonic plates create the tsunami. The continental drift happens because of the moving of the tectonic plates. That vibration creates waves on the ocean and these waves start moving to the harbors and the intensity, basically the wavelength of these uh, get start decreasing their amplitude start increasing and before the tsunami approaches to the coastal areas it for some time uh, drags the water away from the harbors so that it can make it higher and then after the tsunami strikes to the harbors or the coastal areas you can see in the video how the tsunami approaches and what kind of destruction it causes See the establishments or the natural ecosystem, all kind of things uh, gets uh, under the tsunami water and aftermath. Here we can see all the kind of sand and the debris comes from the oceans and gets stored in the coastal areas. Basically, it makes a devastation in the settlements and in the natural ecosystems. So before we go for the characteristic features of the tsunami waves, let me tell you that the tsunamis have been basically divided into two types. First is distant tsunami or deep sea tsunamis and other is local tsunami. After being originated in deep waters, initial tsunami are split into what I was saying, distant and local tsunami. A distinct tsunami moves out to the deep ocean while local tsunami travels to the coastal areas. Basically, when any kind of tsunami uh, energy gets released from the oceans, the distinct tsunami travels away from the harbors and the local tsunami travels towards the harbors, towards coastal areas. So the thing is, the more destruction is caused by the local tsunami that approaches to the coastal areas. 
So these two tsunamis move in opposite direction. Distinct tsunami or deep sea tsunami travel much faster than the local tsunami. But it is the local tsunami that causes destruction in the coastal areas. And now the characteristic features of the tsunami waves. First, the tsunamis are high energy. Uh, sea waves caused by a host causative factors causative factors which I have told you or told you before these are the earthquakes under sea landmines uh, landslides or volcanic eruptions but under sea earthquake event is most bomb, uh, potent factor so the most potent most important factor that creates the tsunami is the earthquake and that too of magnitude of 7.5 five and more the tsunami waves uh, are long waves having longer wavelengths more than 100 kilometers so if we uh, imagine the wave having the wavelength of more than 100 kilometers that it is very difficult to detect such kind of waves when there is already turbulence in the ocean because of the tidal moments waves and many other things in the oceans maybe the cyclones it is very tough to detect this, such low uh, I mean the high wavelength uh, waves in the oceans and in deep oceans uh, I mean in deep oceans basically these uh, wavelengths are more than 100 kilometers but as these move towards coastal areas these these wavelengths gets decreased remarkably as we see in the deep ocean it's very difficult to detect the wavelength of more than 100 but when they start approaching to the coastal areas they, their wavelength gets to start decreasing that's why we can see and uh, we can see the amplitude of the wave uh, of the tsunami gets increasing when it approaches towards the coastal areas after their origin tsunami waves are split in two branches distinct and deep but what do i saying to two types when the tsunami creates one moves towards the coastal areas one more moves in opposite direction these two tsunami moves in opposite directions local tsunamis uh, mean basically moves to the coastal areas and uh, the speed of movement of these two waves depend on the depth of ocean water hence varies as the square root of the water depth of the ocean basically the speed is directly proportional to the square root of the depth of the ocean so the more depth more is the speed less is the depth less is the speed so the normal distant tsunamis travel in deep oceans with a speed of around 500 to 1000 kilometers per hour means the speed is very very high because the depth of the ocean is uh, very high so in the coastal area speed is very less the wavelength of the distant tsunami in deep ocean is much longer i mean the speed can be more than 100 but the wavelengths decrease when they approach the coastal areas the wavelength of the distinct tsunami in the deeper ocean uh, very uh, low sometimes may only be uh, around uh, 20 meters or around some kind of this the height of the water of the tsunami waves above mean sea level in the near uh, shore is called tsunami tsunami run up basically the height which i was called the amplitude of the tsunami wave that is called tsunami run-up okay and another factor is the time lag between successive tsunami waves ranges between 20 to 40 minutes basically it is when any kind of tsunami approaches or it strikes to the coastal areas the next tsunami is predicted in between 20 to 40 minutes after the first tsunami strikes so it is uh, not a single wave phenomenon but it's a multi-wave phenomenon so uh, when we go for the disaster preparedness or mitigation or prevention the awareness about this is very important the people living in there or any kind of activity going on in the oceans like fishing or any kind of sailing they should be informed that the first tsunami is not the only tsunami there can be many other tsunamis also so 
the arrival of tsunami in the coastal zone is uh, huddled by sudden recession of the seawater. What I was calling when the tsunami arrives, there is a recession. The uh, water, as you can see in the video, the water start, uh, the level of water start reducing at the coastal areas. Then it uh, comes up in the form of tsunami run up. So these are various characteristics of tsunami. Then what could be the various causes of the tsunami? Uh, we have discussed about the earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, landslides, in marine landslides. But there are some four uh, major factors which create the tsunami, like the undersea powerful earthquake event exceeding 7.5 magnitude on rector scale. Basically, this tsunami, this kind of uh, in uh, December 26, 2004, in Indian Ocean, a fine example of earthquake. This kind of the reason uh, undersea powerful earthquake uh, was uh, in 2004, 26 December. This kind of tsunami happened in Indian Ocean. Second reason is undersea massive landslides that can be caused by sudden tectonic movements displace seawater upward, which generate tsunamis. So this is quite understandable. And the third reason is collision of convergent destructive plates and subduction of relatively heavier plate below the relatively lighter plate resulting in upthrusting of plate margins, which can cause sudden upward movement or of immense uh, water uh, volume, uh, seawater resulting in the genesis of tsunami. Basically, this was the perfect example which I showed in the video when one plate of basically the tectonic plate, the lighter plate gets uh, rides over the heavier plate and the seawater gets displaced and this gives uh, the genesis of the tsunami. The dimensions and the magnitude of the tsunami in terms of the force of energy dependent upon the nature of rupture of plate and margin of thrusting thereof. So basically in Indian Ocean, Sumatra, so, uh, tsunami in 2004, in, in ocean was a result of rupture of upthrusting and uh, consequent occurrence of tsunami genic uh, earthquake. Basically it was the magnitude of more than 9.3 vector scale. Then the last reason is the explosive, explosive volcanic eruptions. So in earlier videos, we have discussed about the various kinds of volcanic eruptions in which we have uh, discussed the main two types of volcanoes. First is explosive type and second one is fissure or the fissure type basically. Or, um, but in case of uh, the volcanic eruptions, which is explosive type, this can uh, in the sea floor or uh, in and around the islands can also generate the tsunami. Only the violent type of uh, volcanic eruptions um, can create. So these were the various reasons of the uh, volcanic, I mean, the, this tsunami waves. So now we are going to discuss about what could be the various adverse impacts of these um, tsunamis. First is obvious damage to the structure. So the powerful tsunami waves rushing towards the coast, uh, which generates, uh, which has a great speed, basically can damage or destroy physical structures and infrastructure like houses and buildings, roads, railway network, communication system, ships, fishing boats, power lines. Um, now currently uh, in um, oceans, maximum of uh, the our internet transmission happens through the sea cables. This can also destroy our internet cables, optic fiber, fiber cables, and this can create a problem even in the farther area. We can uh, witness a reduction in the internet speed, even in the areas which is not nearby the coastal areas. So in modern times, this is one of the important impact of this tsunami. Then second one reason is the human casualties, basically what is the principle of the disaster management is basically to reduce the impact of certain uh, hazards to the 
settlements or human casualties. So the, it is obvious reason when the tsunami cannot cause the human casualties, then it could not be called as a disaster. The most uh, heart-shaking effect of powerful coast bound tsunami waves and returning water mass are casualties of a large number of people by floating and drowning. The first perfect example was in recent uh, past uh, on 26th of December 2004, which claimed our precious lives of more than 250,000 people of the country bordering in Indian Ocean, like Thailand, Indonesia, India, Sri Lanka, and in Japan. A tsunami on uh, 11th of March 2011 killed more than 10,000 people in Sendai and Fukushima. Uh, clearly speaking of the deadly nature of the tsunami. During in uh, Fukushima, there was another disaster caused by the tsunami that was the Fukushima nuclear disaster in which the nuclear power plant got destroyed because of the tsunamis. So these are very critical uh, damages that are caused by the tsunamis. And another one is the loss of property. Surging tsunami waves incur heavy loss to the human property, including cattle, crop, food stocks, farms, implements, fishing boats, and by their speed and uh, flooding drow uh, and drowning. Agricultural uh, lands basically are rendered infertile by the decomposition of the salt. Basically, it makes the salt uh, salty because there is a salt water intrusion because of the salt water intrusion by the tsunamis into the agriculture land. And on the other adverse effect may be the destruction of the beaches, which could uh, be a good kind of recreational business or the, I mean, the kind of the tourism. Shifting of uh, local island, uh, sometimes um, it can lead to shifting of the islands deposition of the salts on the coastal lands, destruction of marine ecological resources, mainly coral reefs and fishes, scarcity of drinking water due to the contamination of saline water, damage to the ports and harbors, damage to the naval and air force bases, uh, this basically happened in Andaman and Nicobar in 2004 uh, tsunami. Tsunami also creates social problems like uh, mental stress leading to psychological disorders, outbreak of several types of diseases such as epidemics, restlessness, fear, and psychosis. So these were the me, uh, many uh, damages that are called by the uh, desert, that are caused by the tsunamis. So how uh, now we have discussed what is a tsunami and what are various reasons and what are various damages that are caused by the tsunami now. The main thing, how can we manage the tsunami? So in any hazard or disaster, we have three steps for management. The first is pre-disaster stage. Second is uh, during the disaster. And the last one is post-disaster. In pre-disaster stage, our activities are mainly focused on uh, preparedness, uh, mitigation, and protection or prevention that we also call PMP. So in this slide, we will be discussing what are the various activities uh, which comprise under the reduction or mitigation of the, or preparedness towards the tsunami disaster. First is identification and mapping of areas of tsunami genic uh, earthquakes. Basically, we should identify or map the areas where tsunamis are ca frequently caused because of the earthquakes. So obviously, we will not go for any kind of business or settlements or agriculture in, or networking in that area. Second one is the protection and conservation of natural protective line of defense. So the nature have provided us the natural defense towards certain the hazards that are created by the oceans like cyclones, tsunami, storm surges. So these ecosystem or conservation uh, natural ecosystems like mangrove forests are there, which can reduce the uh, intensity of the tsunami, like coral reefs are there, sand beaches are there, coastal and sand dunes are there, backwaters, sea backwaters are there. So these are the natural protective line that reduce the impact of the tsunami. 
Another one is demarcation of coastal regulation zones that are also called CRZ to make them free from human settlements. Basically, we have to do demarcation. What kind of area we should uh, no notify for what kind of activity based on the mapping or identification of the tsunami. And uh, installation of tsunami meters, uh, tracking of uh, undersea earthquake and resultant tsunami risk. Basically, these are the activities that we should implement before the uh, creation of a tsunami. And this stage is very important. Then there should be the provision for prediction and early warning uh, system because the tsunami travels uh, very quietly because the wave length is are more than 100. So it is very really tough to detect the tsunami. Preparedness for timely evacuation of the people living in the danger uh, coastal zones to the safer places, proper training to the government officials and local people to educate the coastal inhabitants and fishermen to strictly follow the tsunami guidelines. And then rehearsal of quick response to the warning hooters. Basically in the beach areas there are hooters which, uh, do, uh, which uh, warn the, uh, the people in the beaches which uh, we call hooters. And uh, because of there is only 20 minutes time to move the safe places because when the tsunami approaches it uh, or second uh, tsunami comes, second wave, it can only give 20 minutes to us to move to the safer places. So it is very important that tsunami hooter should be heard by everyone. And then provision of uh, means of communication in impending danger of tsunami strike provision of suitable measures for reduction of possible uh, tsunami risks like uh, it can be to avoid the low-lying coastal areas for settlements or to build protective seawalls or uh, breakwaters and then there should be a good kind of community education towards the tsunami and uh, uh, equipment for search and rescue should be there, suitable measures for assessing danger, uh, damage such as aerial surveys from the airplanes or helicopters. And the last one is, there are many things, but this I guess is last and important is the medical help. We should keep all these kind of things in place. And in the post disaster stage, what could be the various activities we should do like uh, our post disaster activities are mainly focused on three activities like uh, rescue and um, relief and then uh, recovery and rehabilitation so first one is rescue and evacuation of stranded alive people first if we see that uh, tsunami happened but there are still people they are struck but there is a chance that the next, next tsunami can happen after 20 minutes so there should be the provision that we can rescue and evacuate the stranded people and uh, then we should give them immediate relief in the form of food water medicine psychological counseling this all comprises of the immediate relief and uh, it can also um, maybe the temporary shelters where we can uh, basically uh, give them such kind of things and then recovery basically it is the tsunami when the tsunami happens and the water recedes back to the sea we can go for uh, temporary uh, shelters which provide for the time being till the livelihoods of the various people in the such areas which have been affected can be restored so this is the recovery it may be uh, providing the money uh, it can be uh, in the form of uh, like various kinds of livelihood uh, uh, developments we can do in there in that area or providing the things on the subsidy so that they can build their houses but if we feel that the area is not good for the settlement based on our mapping and identification of the tsunami uh, tsunamiogenic areas then we should better uh, rehabilitate uh, such people from those areas and uh, make them to live in the areas which uh, are safer so the rehabilitation program is long period task which may take a couple of years
So in 2004 tsunami, rehabilitation uh, victims uh, in India was not complete even by June 2006. So it takes more than two years. Thus the fishing communities were the worst sufferers as they lost not only their houses, but also they lost the means of livelihood. So basically the rehabilitation is a long phase. Recovery is a short period of time. The recovery from mental agony and fear is also a long-term process because people keep talking about it. They have fear that it may be, it may happen again in the future. Uh, but at last, the sea is once again a source of livelihood of fishermen and turned them to the as a demon at such kind of situations. So, we should uh, basically. Uh, preparedness for any kind of disaster is very important so we should more focus on the kind of the pre-disaster activity so that uh, we have to do less work in the post disaster so this was all about the tsunami uh, disaster management i hope you all enjoyed this lecture okay thank you very much